Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is part three of my portable astrophotography series. It's the third and final part. Uh, if you missed the other two videos, the first video was about me acquiring my toolbox and just talking about my ideas for um, setting up a portable solution. The second part is showing me actually building out the solution. And this third video is gonna be about giving you a review of the solution that I have since I've been able to take it out and use it in the field a couple times now, uh, as well as showing you the inside, how I've organized all of my equipment, and then showing you uh, my equipment setup as well and what I think of it. I'll link to the first two videos in the description as well. And uh, I hope you enjoy this video, hope you find it helpful, and uh, we'll get started. All right, so in my previous videos, I've showed you the toolbox itself. This is how it opens. You lift this latch here, and then it slides back has this bottom bin, which I've divided into three sections, and it's got this middle bin that has a bunch of smaller containers, which is really great for organizing equipment. And then the top bin is where I keep my uh, imaging rig. Okay, so starting with the bottom bin, I've got three separate compartments that I built out using cardboard and duct tape. I know it's a little janky, but it was just for a prototype until I figure out how to make some sturdy compartments, whether that be out of wood or plastic or whatever, I'm not sure yet. So starting in this compartment over here, this is where I'm storing my counterweight shaft, the counterweight itself. Um, and some other stuff, dovetail, bar, all that stuff. In the middle compartment is where I'm storing my mount. And then in this compartment here is where, well, I've got like a bunch of zip ties because, you know, you can't have enough zip ties. Um, but this is where I store my Celestron power pack. And the bottom of the compartment I've lined with that pick and pluck foam as well. So it's protected on the bottom. The sides are not protected, it's just plastic. I haven't found that it's been a problem. It seems to work pretty well. And moving on to the middle compartment. This is where I'm storing all of my different uh, accessories here. I've got this case that holds all of my Allen wrenches, extraneous cables and uh, supplies, stuff like that. This bin here holds my ZWO 294MC Pro cooled camera case. And that just kind of sits there. I don't really use it. And then over here are a bunch of other cables. I'm not sure where to put yet. The more important stuff is on these two sides here. This side holds my headlamp, my mount controller. I guess it's in there. This bin here holds AC adapters and power cords for the uh, Pegasus power box as well as the uh, Celestron power tank. So moving on to this bin here, this holds my ASI Air, the Pegasus power box, and the attached wiring harness uh, that I made using just this plastic stuff that you can order off of Amazon or, you know, get from your hardware store. So in this top compartment, I've got my dew heater strips, um, which I haven't found a really good place for this yet, so I'm just going to keep it here for now. And then I've got this little holder here that holds some lens caps and ring adapters. Here's my imaging rig. I've got the attached filter wheel and the camera. I wanted to keep this whole thing intact. I didn't want to have to build my imaging train every single session. That would just get really cumbersome and uh, waste a lot of time. I've got some pick and pluck foam that I got from Amazon. It works really well. It's really great for shaping around the object that you're trying to protect. It's really easy to work with once you get the hang of it. And as you can see, it protects the entire scope. And then I also stuck some foam on the top here using double-sided sticky tape. And so that once you close it, it's nice and snug. And you know that you're protected. So the reason why I went with this was because I wanted something that was portable, something that was pretty sturdy. I will say that I've gotten a chance to take it out into the field, not only outside my apartment, about 50 feet outside, on the waterfront here in Long Island City, but also I was able to take it on a trip to Maine a few months ago, transported via ferry onto an island in Casco Bay. It survived, none of my equipment was broken. This uh, solution held up really well. What I also like is that there are three main compartments and they're different sizes. There are not too many compartments. Uh, I think if there were too many, then it'd be a little bit overwhelming. It actually would be harder to organize. So once I've got everything packed away, I'll close this up. There's a little handle back here that pulls up like this. And then you just tilt it and you roll it. And it's nice and smooth. And then the other thing I want to talk about is 
this here. So this is actually the bag that I bought to carry my skateboard, my longboard. I found that I didn't really use it that much, so I just kind of put it away for a while. And then I realized, you know what, I need something to carry my tripod in. So this is great. It actually fits perfectly. This, as you can see, it's like the perfect size. And once I zip it around, zip it back up. It actually has these two backpack straps. Put it on my back. Find the other strap. Yeah, and it just uh, is really easy to carry. So I used to put the tripod on the toolbox like this, and lean this over, and then roll it around. Uh, but that got really cumbersome because you know then you have to like make your way through doorways and stuff, make sure it fits. Putting it on my back is so much simpler. I can maneuver much quicker, much more easily. And now I'm gonna build my rig and then show you what I have. All right, so what we have here is my Celestron power tank, uh, which straps to the leg of the tripod, which is great because when I have to move my tripod, uh, this goes with it. It also has a nice little work light here. It can change from white to red as well. This comes in really handy when you're setting up or tearing down your equipment. It has some uh, outputs here to charge your, um, your phone and stuff like that. Okay, so moving up, we've got the Skywatcher EQM 35 Pro mount. So this pulls out and you've got your polar finder scope here. Um, and then you remove this cap up here and you look through here to line up your mount with Polaris. This is really flimsy. I don't really like it. It falls off all the time. I just kind of use it to roughly point the mount to Polaris and then I use my ASI Air to uh, do the actual polar alignment. Uh, so I don't really use this at all. It's a nice little mount. It tracks pretty well. Uh, I've done five minute exposures on it. One thing I don't like is that your declination control module is separate from this. I just kind of wish it was just all one unit. As you know, less cables than better cable management. So what I use for control is an ASI Air. Power management is done with this Pegasus power box. I strap the two together and this whole thing just kind of velcros to this filter wheel, which I'll talk about later. So for my main camera, I've got the ZWO 294MC Pro cooled camera, which I love a lot. I think it's maybe a little overkill for my uh, Red Cat 51, but if I ever upgrade to a different telescope, I'll still be able to use this just fine. I also went with a manual filter wheel. Uh, it holds two inch filters and it has five slots in it. The reason why I added a filter wheel is because I knew I wanted to use both a L Enhanced narrowband filter as well as a L Pro uh, light pollution filter to use with my one-shot color camera and I didn't want to have to unscrew my camera and basically disrupt my image train and open it up to dust and stuff like that especially when I'm outside in the field this is a much simpler solution where I can just turn the dial and switch it to whatever filter I need to the first slot is completely open the second slot is my L Pro filter and the third slot is my L enhanced filter so it's actually coming quite handy when I'm shooting at night and I'm switching from galaxies to nebula and you know vice versa so up here I've got my ZWO 30F4 guide scope here and this is a ZWO 120mm mini guide camera. This plugs into my main camera as well. Also underneath my guide camera is this green laser pointer that um, I added to basically point my scope in the right direction when I'm doing my polar alignment for the first time. 
The reason why I went with a green laser pointer instead of a red dot finder is because I'm in the middle of New York City and there's a lot of light pollution. It's actually kind of hard for me to see stars, especially to see Polaris with the naked eye. Using a red dot finder, you know, and having to crouch down in awkward angles, you know how it is. It's a little bit cumbersome. This actually makes it easier for me to roughly point my scope to Polaris and then I just run through the polar alignment routine via my ASI Air and it all works out great. And last but not least is my William Optics Red Cat 51 millimeter apochromatic telescope. It has a really fast lens, it's f4.9. It has a built-in batten off mask. So I use this batten off mask to focus my telescope and it works out great. The William Optics has a dew shield. This is a focusing ring here and this is the focus lock here. I like the telescope a lot, highly recommend it. The reason why I went with the Red Cat 51 is because it's my first foray into deep sky astrophotography. You know, it's kind of recommended when you do it for the first time that you go with like a wide field because then it makes it easier for you to locate your objects and to frame it up and center it. Eventually I'll upgrade, but for now, this is a great telescope. It's nice and sharp and it's fast, uh, which for me being outside, it's really important for me to acquire all my data in as quickly and efficiently as possible. So that's my portable astrophotography rig. As you know, I live in the middle of New York City. I don't have a house with a backyard where I can uh, conveniently pull my rig out and leave it running all night and then come back in the morning and tear it all down. I have to either uh, take it upstate somewhere outside the city or I roll it out to the waterfront, which is about 50 feet away from my apartment. Either way, I need something that's portable, something that I can put all in one box and carry it all out at once. And uh, this has been a great solution for me. I'm really happy with it. It has not failed me yet. I mentioned the ASI Air in this video. If you want me to demo the ASI Air in a future video, just let me know in the comments and um, I'll, uh, I'll make a video for that. But this was really just to show you my entire portable solution. So that's it for the video. Thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Clear skies.